better a person to start this evening with than other than Puneet Goyal, who's the founder of Blue Smart. Uh, you know, as I was telling you that IDEA Awards really are about big tech and uh, startup tech and how they're sort of bringing the new tech together. So, you know, we, here we have a young founder who's actually doing that and more at Blue Smart. So, you know, the way they are building uh, the ha ride hailing business and the charging infrastructure in this country and doing pretty much the full stack of mobility in this country is really amazing. So, first of all, a huge round of applause. We travel in his cats. And we always admire how we've sort of gone all the way and enjoyed that ride. So thank you for joining us today evening, uh, Puneet. Um, you know, uh, given the fact that you, you've been a late entrant in this uh, space, you know, we've had Ola, which is homegrown, and then Uber, which is a global company. So what, uh, what was the opportunity that you saw uh, that gave you the, the, the right kind of vision to say that, you know, there is a gap in the market? And that is the gap we are going to cover and, uh, you know, and Blue Smart was built. Yeah, so I think um, the market opportunity we saw was massive. I mean, we are, uh, we are building an energy infrastructure and mobility company in alphabetical order. So everybody, I don't know how many of you have used Blue Smart here uh, in Bangalore uh, and how many of you must have used Blue Smart in Delhi. And we look like a consumer centric ride hailing service. Uh, but besides that, we are also building large scale EV charging infra. And the idea was very simple. We figured out that uh, companies like Uber will not be able to really build out charging infrastructure. They are largely uh, uh, purely um, ride hailing companies. It'll be very difficult for Uber to really transition to becoming an energy and infra company. They've never done that in the past. And we thought it'd be great to partner with a company like Uber. So when we got this idea back in 2019, we started off by partnering with Uber. We deployed the cars on the Uber platform. Uh, we started off with uh, deploying about 10, 20, 30, 40, 70 cars uh, on the Uber platform, finally scaled the partnership to about nearly 300 cars. And we figured out that uh, Uber will need EVs and they don't know how to build charging in from. So when I teamed up with my co-founder Anmol, uh, who is an energy veteran in the, in the renewable energy space, he runs a company called Gensol, and I pitched my idea to, uh, to Anmol. And I said that, look, I have this thesis or thought process that the EV transition is going to happen in the US and also in India and it's imminent that all cars will become eventually electric. But platforms like Uber, which don't own the cars, don't own the charging infrastructure and completely are dependent on an outsource model where third party drivers are bringing cars on the platform, companies like them will never be able to go fully uh, electric because they will depend on third party drivers ability to bring cars, bracket electric cars, and also figure out where the charging infra is. So it'd be a very long drawn process for companies like Uber. Let's become an enabler for Uber to go fully electric. How can we do that? By building out the charging infrastructure, by bringing electric cars and partnering with Uber. So Blue, Blue Smart 1.0 was where we deployed the Blue Smart cars on the Uber platform. And for one year, everybody was saying, ye wala Uber chahiye. Because if you would summon an Uber car, a blue smart car would arrive and pick you up. It's like booking a Malaysian Airlines ticket and Singapore Airlines coming and picking you up. So people were pleasantly surprised with the high quality experience they were experiencing on the Uber platform. That was a journey 1.0. And on 5th December 2019, um, after having spent a year with Uber, we graduated from the class of Uber 2019. So we are Uber class of 19 actually, having worked with Uber for a year. And then we migrated to our own platform, which was Blue Smart. We haven't looked back since, and we started scaling because we understood that the missing point, uh, Ritu, was the fact that in the EV world, you need more than electric cars, and you need charging infra. So how we're looking at this business is a business where we're building a vertically integrated, born electric, EV e-mobility ride-hailing service and EV charging network, where we build out EV charging super hubs, uh, which becomes the founding uh, tenet or the founding or the bedrock on which the ride hailing business is scaling and the ride hailing business of Blue Smart becomes the anchor tenant to the charging infrastructure business and that really allowed us to scale. Mm -hmm. uh, another point we saw, this is all on the supply side innovation and we're bringing EVs on the platform. The bigger opportunity we saw on the consumer side when we were using Uber in India or Ola in India in back in 2018 was the fact that the consumers were unhappy. There were a lot of ride denials happening, some surge pricing issues, people were paying exponentially for, for mobility. And we thought we could probably create a differentiated experience, a slightly elevated one for the consumers, and, and, and start providing them a much better service than what they've expected, uh, what they were getting. 
we also understood that india of 20 uh, 18 19 was a tad different from the india of 2008 and 9 people are now more well traveled globe trotters they go overseas they experience much better forms of mobility these are indians who go overseas a lot so we saw that uber in the us was able to offer great service and we understood the underlying challenge was supply side the drivers in india have to buy cars and these are really poor people they did not go to iit roorkee or i am ahmedabad or uh, or i am calcutta these are very poor people who have this uh, trouble of buying a car and they deploy the car on the uber platform to earn from it the uber global model is the airbnb of mobility model where the cars are already there in the us largely us is a 2 trillion dollar automobile market india's gdp is 4 trillion dollars so in layman language the uh, the automobile market of the us is half of india's gdp and that is where cars are already available and cars can be on the platform of uber or lyft in india with the asset ownership is really low it's 40 cars per 1000 people and china and china neighbor is about 275 cars per 1000 people us is about 700 cars per 1000 people it's slightly easier for models like uber to really scale and bring assets but in india the biggest core strength of uber in the us is the biggest weakness in india bringing assets is a challenge and because the drivers are so disgruntled and unhappy all that is passed to the customer experience and customer is the one who ultimately receives all the unhappiness of the driver and the customers are unhappy so we thought we will launch two industry first features uh the first one being zero ride denials so we started with the concept of offering a car to the customer without any cancellation from our side zilch nada zero cancellations from our side second one we thought that we will not do any surge pricing we'll keep the uh, experience consistent fixed pricing like uh, platforms like uh, you know the bst bus of bombay or the delhi metro or tube of london or subway of new york these are transportation platforms and pretty reliable ones but all of them have fixed pricing structure you already know what you're going to pay for so we thought okay this will be two good product feature that the consumers may like may not like god knows but let's probably roll them out and let's see the feedback i mean the feedback was amazing people in mega cities of india want reliable mobility everybody wants to go to school on time you want to go to write your sat exam on time gmat exam on time you want to make it to the uh, entrepreneur show on time you want to go to the airport on time you want to go to the railway station on time you want to attend a marriage on time you want to go and see the movie on time you want to go and attend your child's convocation ceremony on time so time with a capital t is finite for me for anmol jaggi for bill gates for all these entrepreneurs here time is equal for everybody everybody has 24 hours in a day nobody gets just because you are a rich person you don't get extra time and people were not able to reach their destination on time so we said okay let's sell time let's sell reliability let's let's be that mobility player which probably addresses that big challenge around ride denials that i think was um, the success for us and consumer love came in we provided that consumer experience and we created that differentiator experience for the consumer when they had a reliable ride hailing service regardless of the season covid not covid or whatever season and and that's what consumer really loved that's on the consumer experience side yeah. but you know you also interestingly built a model of ev leasing uh, now you know it's a very inclusive model where you sort of want to bring a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of people uh, into your ecosystem so what what was the idea behind it and what was it that you know um, uh, what was your purpose of building a model like that so leasing of assets was the only way for us to scale we figured out that the drivers are the weakest uh, point of the ecosystem a driver is not a macquarry a driver is not a jp morgan driver is not a credit suisse driver is not a blackrock driver is not tamasek it's not driver's core ability to bring car on the table a driver is a poor person who is just trying to fend for herself or himself driver's job is to drive and fundamentally we figured out that driver's core skill set is to drive a driver is not a financing institution driver is not bandhan driver is not icici so why to burden the driver with bringing a car on the table given that india is a poor market is a two wheeler and three wheeler market 78% of india travels on two wheelers and three wheelers if i add bicycles and tricycles then 88% of india travels on two and three wheelers across across everywhere india is not a four wheeler market in terms of it's only 40 cars per 1000 people and we didn't want to burden poor people owning cars and that gives them stress when you eliminate stress from somebody's body the efficiency of the person goes up and when the person is stressed all the time of fuel cost or car cost how to pay for emi then the experience of that person or the overall um, service quality will go down so we said okay now if the drivers can't bring cars 
let's decouple driver from asset ownership let's yeah. institutionalize entire supply side and both my co-founder and mol and i we spent some time in the renewable energy space where we worked with large dfis who funded our solar projects so we went to the same institutions and we said okay look we are going to build this ride hailing service and charging network will you fund cars will you finance us for cars and we'll want to lease the car so very similar to the way indigo airlines works or lufthansa works or british airways works they lease planes right so we we took the analogy from the aviation sector and we say we'll lease our aircraft or lease our electric cars and we're looking at cars like aeroplanes so we will go to dfis and applying pareto's principle and i'm economic student so i thought we we should go to institutions who have the ability capability to finance thousands of cars one driver can bring one car on table one dfi can bring 5000 cars on the table so if and you know everybody has 10 fingers in their hands if you go to 10 institutions they all can fund 100000 cars we don't need to go to the 11th institution only for for getting cars so that's what we set out to do we started leasing cars we uh, you know created a leasing platform uh, that leasing stand alone spv then gets the loan from dfi sanctioned to they have money in the bank for 20000 cars on the road we have only 6000 cars so a lot of money sitting in the bank to deploy the biggest roadblock for blue smart is charging infrastructure and we understood that if this is the biggest roadblock for us must be for others also the biggest opportunity and the biggest roadblock is charging infra the more charging infrastructure blue smart or companies like blue smart can build the more evs we can bring on the table so again it goes back to my earlier thesis that we are a energy infrastructure mobility bracket ride hailing company in alphabetical order um my uh, mentor uh, who helped me build this business is uh, brent kalinikus he is a guy uh, who raised 5 billion dollar for uber in uh, 13 14 15 sarka he was cfo of uber i had a chance meeting with him in nevada in california in uh, 2017 i had gone to see this company called hyperloop one and i had gone to meet him for that and we were sitting and talking um, in malibu beach uh, in los angeles and brent showed me a charging station of charge point which was charging a bmw i8 car it was the first time i saw a charging station charging an ev in, uh, in at the malibu club in los angeles and brent said something very interesting which became the founding tenant of blue smart he said that companies like uber are airbnb so mobility in layman language as it is there you can monetize it it will be very difficult to create airbnb of electric mobility uh, in layman language there are not many assets on the road what will you monetize that doesn't exist and then i started thinking that that's a great yeah that's that's true we have to first create assets then monetize them so we can't create a monetization model before assets only don't exist so we had to reengineer our supply side in order to give a differentiated elevated customer experience and that differentiation of the supply side innovation had to be done otherwise if we would be at the back end call of a poor driver buying a car then we'll have to wait 20 years for evs to come on the road and hence we had to build out this entire differentiated supply stack um how does solar fit into the puzzle i mean you know given the fact that there is so much sort of riding in india on solar energy and you know the government sort of pushing uh, solar out there so where does it fit yeah so solar again was always our call i mean we are from the renewable space uh, we believe that solar is the cheapest form of uh, uh, electron the best way to produce energy when i in fact met amitabh kant back in 2018 and with this idea of blue smart as trying to convince him sir ye karna chahiye india ko ev karna chahiye at that time cng was 46 rupees the kg and uh, i remember this cost of cng went to 50 60 70 80 90 it reached 93 rupees the kg nobody knew that the cost of cng will go it was a darling fuel in india all ride hailing platforms in india use cng as their main fuel and but that cost of cng went up 2.46 times um, in just a matter of 4 years including the pandemic period when we had this idea petrol and diesel in india was 65 rupees a liter in 2018 the cost of petrol went above 100 rupees a liter so we understood that if we will be at the beck and call of crude or or fuels like petrol diesel and cng you can never make money because the cost of fuel uh, will always go up india's import bill was 60 billion dollars um uh, when the finance minister read the budget in 2018 india's import bill is now above 120 billion dollars maybe will be 200 billion dollars you try to do something with methanol ethanol and all that but still the cost will keep going up because india is a fast growing economy 8% gdp growth more people are now having disposable income lot of discretionary spending more people are buying cars right now more people will need oil so india is going to china when us way so we thought okay now we'll have to shift to using evs as the first base but eventually to further lower our cost and to become profitable at scale we will use renewable energy uh, but that should happen at scale 
So now Blue Smart has about 6,000 cars. We have covered about 0.4 billion kilometers on the roads, 400 million kilometers. Uh, we have completed 12.5 million trips. We're doing about 60, 65 million dollars of uh, annual revenue. Now was the right time to shift to renewable energy. And uh, so we partnered with Tata Power uh, as a first project where uh, from their 200 megawatt solar power plant in Barme, Rajasthan, we have contracted a 30 megawatt solar capacity. So Tata Power is supplying us 30 megawatts of solar uh, energy from their 200 megawatt solar power plant in Rajasthan. India has one grid, one nation policy. So we get the energy which is powering our 42 megawatt power load of all our charging hubs, in turn powering 160 megawatt of batteries across 6,000 cars in Delhi and CR and Bangalore. So this is the first of its kind where Blue Smart becomes the world's first EV ride hailing service and charging network to be 100% powered by renewable energy. So we now are decarbonizing mobility at scale. And that was a mission statement from day one. It's just that we're executing it now. That's great. And I mean, um, you know, it, and what scale you're doing it at. It's so, it's so nice to hear it. And, you know, and it's amazing to see. And now they've also stepped incidentally out of India as well. Um, so I think you're going to uh, be soon, you'll find blue smart cars in UAE as well. I don't know if I'm allowed to make this statement now uh, or my co-founder will kill me. But but yeah, maybe sometime this year, uh, I will probably keep, be diplomatic here. Uh, sometime this year, in some coming months, we will be in an overseas market and we'll obviously share it with the media and with also with the right uh, with our friends. But right now, we are focusing on the core geographies of Delhi, India and Bangalore. But yeah, with ambitions for obviously looking out um, so you're also incidentally the chief of fundraising uh, for Blue Smart. So you know, and they say that you know your investor goes with you a long way. So it's a good marriage that sort of goes for many years. So how do you sort of select your right investor, and how does the investor select you, and where do these minds meet? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the uh, the tag, I mean, I had to become chief of something, <laughs> so I didn't know what to do in the company besides just making the logo yeah, Blue Smart, Smart. But and I see one of the investors uh, in the jury, uh, Sandeep Bhamar, he's an investor in Blue Smart uh, Green Frontier Capital. I think we were on one of these platforms in 2018, and Anmol and I were presenting Blue Smart. I think everybody was laughing at us, saying that what are these two people doing? I mean, we were laughing stock at that time. I think there were more than 200 people who were telling us, don't waste your time. You guys are renewable energy entrepreneurs. Focus on building solar projects. This is not a, this is not a, your cup of tea. In the Ola Uber world, nobody can make a dent. Nobody will be able to do. So we thought, okay, probably you know some naysayers today. I mean, along the fundraising, we also we have found probably the same. Um, uh, we still still get the same reception. But there are some people who believed in us and uh, and uh, like-minded people who believed in the long-term oh, yeah. vision of the company. And now with the EV adoption actually picking up, there's a lot of knowledge also. A lot of people now today. I know a lot of people have now become PhDs in electric mobility. I know I meet a lot of people who are now have the domain knowledge also. So it's slightly easier to now share our story with our investors. Uh, also, we're not targeting every kind of investor. So now we understand that since we are a very different kind of company, we're targeting energy um, uh, transition funds, we're targeting climate impact funds, uh, infrastructure funds. Largely, we are looking at ourselves as an infra story. And so we're only targeting infra investors, not VCs, not venture capital investors, growth debt and growth capital investors who are investing in the clean energy space or the infrastructure space. And they believe that this is a good story in the making. Uh, infrastructure is needed for India's growth. If India were to scale from a $4 trillion economy to a $12 trillion economy, that will happen on the back of $5 trillion in infrastructure investment. As for McKinsey, Bain, BCG, they all are saying that India will need new investments of about $5 trillion. And we are playing a very small part there by building infrastructure for tomorrow. Um, and uh, EVs are batteries, uh, moving batteries, uh, uh, and charging infrastructure is also critical for India's growth. So largely choosing the infra kind of investors, infrastructure investors. Um, we'll also like to explore, you know, your entrepreneurial side. So you were from right from your days at Harvard, I believe. Um, were you sure that, you know, entrepreneurship is your journey to go forward? Or, you know, did you sort of wanted to be um, working for a while before you sort of jumped the bandwagon of entrepreneurship? So I think I think uh, I, I was in um, uh, in London then. I was studying at London School of Economics and uh, I started at that time thinking that I should do something in the clean energy space. Uh, I had uh, met a consultant in India when I had come down. Uh, and he at that time was telling me that solar could be the big, next big thing. And after uh, finishing my graduation, I went to another college called Aston Business School in Birmingham, where I did my dissertation on something I had to do. I chose clean energy as my dissertation topic and 
was few months, I wrote a paper on uh, renewable energy, and that got me excited to ven venture into my first venture of solar panel manufacturing when I came back to India in 2008. And, uh, you know, got into the renewable energy space by manufacturing solar panels. The first four years were great. Uh, we achieved revenues of close to 100 million euros. We were manufacturing solar panels in India and exported into Europe. 8, 9, 10, 11 was great. But the market crashed, plummeted. I went through bankruptcy and I had to shut down my first venture after having achieved sales of about $100 million. It was a very bad time for me in 2012. I almost was completely wiped out on the road. And I thought probably this is my end of entrepreneurship. I never want to be an entrepreneur again. Let us go work for a company and much easier. But then again, I said maybe not. I should try again. So I did my second venture, which was a solar power plant, which we built out in Gujarat. That's my co-founder, Anmol. He built it out for us. And that's how we met. And the, it was a good success. We got a pretty good money for selling it. And this third venture again. And then obviously, um, when I exited all my solar ventures and I had a chance meeting in the US with Brent with this idea came up. And I think everything just led to another. I had no idea that I would probably be here where I am today. It's a journey that we, you know, have traversed over time and probably learned with failures. I think each failure teaches you something new and, and it probably opens more doors. Till you don't fail, you don't learn. If you want to be in your comfort zone, then probably you'll never learn anything. So it's good to fail, good to learn from people. And then, yeah, either you can learn from your own failures or somebody else's failure. But in, regardless, you have to learn from somebody's yeah. failure yourself or somebody else. And now that you're embarking on an international journey, how, how sort of differently are you going to approach building a business outside India versus building it in India? Yeah, so in India, our geography, we know the market very well. And it's our uh, back office here, so we know what the market is. Um, I think what we have delivered here is a great consumer experience. So I think, and consumers are really happy, we have become a brand. Now, there's a lot of Indian diaspora that, that travels overseas, and they want that brand also there. Uh, the market that we are trying to open to is also where a lot of Indians are or go there. And we believe that there should be some need for us there. Okay, So what is the need? Is ride healing a challenge there? Is EV adoption uh, being promoted by the government? Is there a need for Blue Smart there? Identifying that market, doing the research on it, you know, a lot of conviction. Should we launch, not launch? Should we stay back in Indian market, continue build here, which is a great strategy, and we will do that. But also keeping our eyes and ears open on opportunities overseas. So we are still in that phase right now. And like I said, um, uh, uh, we are trying to build it. Uh, we have got the permits, approvals, licenses to operate in the market. You got the necessary finan financial uh, financial wherewithals or money to operate there. It's just that we need to take that big bold step to actually launch there. But otherwise, the the foundation platform is ready. Sure, and you know, so we have in this room some big tech shots, and we also have very young startup founders. So, any any sort of message do you have for the young startup founders, given your own journey as a founder, um, you know, as to how they should build the enterprise? I don't have much to share, but I think I always believed, uh, at least with the Blue Smart journey, is that you have to believe in yourself. When people will laugh at you or not believe it, if you only don't believe in yourself, nobody will believe in you. So the first person to believe in yourself is yourself. You have to believe in your own self. You don't need third party validation or somebody smile or clap or happen. You have to believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, you can do anything you want. And don't do things for third party validation. Do it for your own validation. If you're unhappy, don't do it. If you're happy, do it. And I mean, that's the, that's the way I've always seen in life. I don't care about what people think. I care about what I think. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I probably can share. I don't know if it's sure. a, uh, how So believe in yourself, uh, ladies and gentlemen. A huge round of applause for Praneet. Um, probably got, uh, you know, uh, a unicorn and a global entrepreneur being born very soon out of India. Uh, and Blue Smart is probably all ready to go big guns and uh, many um, sort of congratulations to you for building Blue Smart and all the very best in your journey as you sort of embark to a more bigger market in the world, not just India, but the world. So thank you, thank you very much thank you. Uh, for talking to us.